January 3, 2020. An American drone strike in Iraq killed 10 people, including Iran's Quds Force commander, Qasem Soleimani. Retribution from Tehran was swift. Taking to Twitter, the country's foreign minister condemned the attack as an assassination, saying the United States bore responsibility for all consequences. Meantime, U.S. President Donald Trump defended the strike, saying Soleimani was behind thousands of deaths. As the war of words escalated, world leaders urged restraint. Anti-American protests breaking out across Iran. It was no surprise when on January 8th, Iran hit back, launching 22 ballistic missiles at two military installations hosting American and allied troops in Iraq. That same day saw the downing of a Ukraine Airlines passenger jet just shortly after takeoff in Tehran, killing all 176 people aboard. Iran later admitted its military had accidentally shot down the plane. The perceived cover-up of the incident led to thousands of Iranians once again taking to the street, this time, though, in protest of the country's leadership. I want to quickly ask you about your take on the events that we've seen here in the Middle East. Are we safer as a result of the president's action when it comes to Iran? The taking out of Soleimani definitely has been an important step to check at least some of the ambitions of Iran uh, after its very provocative actions in the past year. The uh, attacks on the oil tankers uh, culminating in the attack on the Aramco uh, facilities. And uh, there was no response. And so this was uh, sort of a wake-up call to the Iranian government and the Iranian leadership that they can't get away with it. And we saw the response that they uh, responded with reflected that. Uh, they sort of said, all right, we're going to make a gesture. And Zarif said it, that is enough, uh, no more uh, gestures. And as if to ask for the Americans not to go further. Um, but it also ignited something in Iran as well, the demonstrations that came out especially after the downing of the Ukrainian plane. And you saw how Iranian mobs tore down the pictures of Soleimani from the walls and the posters that were up there. And the cheering was very condemnative, not just of the late Soleimani, but also of Khamenei. They are telling him, resign. Uh, you remember the cheers that were going on in the Arab world uh, during the 2011 uh, so-called Arab Spring. You know, um, the people want you to resign, the people want you to leave, etc. This is what they were chanting in the streets of Tehran and other cities in, in Iran. So it definitely was a very important step from that aspect. Whether it will stop um, further activities by Iran to use the methods that Soleimani was uh, very clever in using, I don't think so. I think uh, Iran is a, the Iranian leadership, I shouldn't say Iran, has an agenda and a project. And that project is to be the dominant uh, representative, if you like, of all of Islam in the world. And they use surrogates like Hezbollah in Lebanon, the Hashd al-Shabi in Iraq, what they sent to, to Syria to kill Syrians, etc., the Houthis in the Yemen, to implement that project. And that is going to continue, maybe less efficiently than when Soleimani was alive, but in, inevitably equally terroristic and, in my view, evil in its intent. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.